Hey everybody, it's Ripley. Welcome back. Um, you made it through chain rule, man. You really have the lion's share of the knowledge for being able to pretty much take the derivative of anything you want. Excuse me. Um, we're going to talk about implicit differentiation here for just a sec. And uh, it's really a fancy word for just something that's really intuitive. It's, it's a very clever way of, of dealing with the issue of non-functions, really. So let's say that I have Let's say that I have a non-function that looks like this, okay? Now, this problem confronted mathematicians, so I can't call this f of x because it's not a function. It doesn't pass the vertical line test, all right? However, and this is what drove them nuts, is, uh, whoops, we've got tangent lines everywhere. I mean, it appears to be a piecewise, I mean, badly drawn piecewise smooth function, right? So it's smooth everywhere. I can take derivatives wherever I want. All right, maybe, well, they're not going to exist wherever the, the uh, tangent line is vertical, but I can take all these derivatives. So what happened was math mathematicians were like, okay, we know that tangent lines exist on this thing. Okay, it's not a function. That's problematical. But what can we do, if anything? Is there any trickery that we can do to be able to figure out how to, how to find these equations of tangent lines? All right? And I think you'll like the way this works out. It's pretty cool. So we've bear in mind and keep in the back of your mind that, that we've lost our functions. So it's not as simple as plugging in one value and get it one x value and getting one y value back, because like right here, all hell breaks loose, right? But let's start with a not function that we're pretty comfortable with. Let's say that I have x squared plus y squared equals who cares, nine, right? So it's a circle of radius three, centered at the origin. Again, we know that this guy, badly drawn, has tangents to it. Right? It's, got a it's got a vertical one here and horizontal ones there. You know, we can figure out what this thing is doing theoretically. Is it increasing? Is it decreasing? What's going on? All right, so let me, let me show you this. The tool that we're going to employ is called implicit differentiation. And the cool thing about implicit differentiation is it's so far-reaching. It seems like one of these little library things where you, you, ooh, I learned that, and I stick it in the library and forget about it. No, 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 you're going to use this thing over and over and over again. Now, here's what we're going to do. Since I don't have a function to say I'm going to take the derivative of it, I'm simply going to say I'm going to take the derivative of this whole thing. I'm going to differentiate the whole thing. I realize it ain't a function, so it's not going to work like regular old functions. However, um, it, we should be able to take derivatives because there are tangent lines, and those tangent lines have slopes. Now, I want you to notice something. Through this Leibniz notation, it's wonderful. It says, with respect to x, which is this really cool way of saying, okay, we're kind of arbitrarily choosing one of the variables to take the derivatives with respect to that thing. And that's going to play out further down the road in your more advanced calculus courses with something called uh, partial derivatives. So that idea is, okay, I'm going to treat everything as though I'm differentiating with respect to x, and we're going to see what happens. All right, you ready? So if I differentiate x squared with respect to x, that's fine. I get it to x. If I differentiate y squared as though it's an x, in other words, as though it's x squared, what I get is 2y, but I leave a footnote. And that footnote says, OK, I differentiated y as though it was an x. It's kind of like, oops, my bad. I'll just leave this sort of algebraic footnote here. Now, th th I'm overly simplifying that, but I, d I want you to realize that the the proof of why implicit differentiation works, it's more algebraic in nature, but the end result is every time you differentiate a variable that doesn't match up with the variable with which you're supposed to be taking derivatives, you simply leave a footnote. You know, it's like leaving a leaving a, a, a dollar for somebody on the table. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, here you go. I took a derivative. My bad. Here you go. You know, to compensate. The derivative of any constant is zero. Now, notice what we're trying to to solve for. Remember, at the end of the day, we, we want something that spits out derivatives. We need a machine, a derivative-producing machine. So I'm simply going to solve for this guy. If Piece of cake, right? I know that dy, whoops, dy over dx in a puff of algebra, if I subtract 2x across, I get negative 2x and I divide by 2y. What do I end up with? Negative x over y. Now, look at that. That's pretty cool because think about what that means. Clearly, the derivative of a not function should also be a not function. And what this tells me is that not only do I have a not function for a derivative, but to be able to make this thing work, 
rather than a regular first derivative where all I need is an x, I need just an x value to make it work. Well, now I need more information. I need uh, quite a bit more, right? Double the information. Now, instead of just sticking x's in and getting a value out, now I need a point. And that kind of makes sense if you think about it. Let's go back to our circle. Let's say that I want to figure out the derivative of this guy. Now, the, here's a little notational funness, if that's a word. At the point, let's see, what's a point that we know has is, is got to be on the unit circle? What? Uh, I don't know. Let's go um, with 9, 2, root 5, right? So at the point 2, comma, root 5, right? Because 2 squared plus root 5 squared is 9. All right? Now, notice this notation. This is a cumbersome notation, but because we're taking a derivative at a point, right? We have to say this is where we're taking the derivative at. Because it's not like here where I can simply plug in an x. I have to plug in a point. Now let's see how this plays out. I'm at the point 2, wait, 2 comma root 5. Do I want that? Yeah, I want 2 comma root 5. If I go 2 comma 2, because this is 3 here. So if I go 2, then I'm going to be in the positive right here. I'm going to want a slope of, I want, I want it to be negative. Now notice, if I were to just try to make this, if I were try to try to make this derivative behave like this guy right here, when I stuck 2 in, I would get two lines tangent, right? Because this right here is x equals 2. When I plug x equals 2 in, I don't know which tangent line I'm talking about. So what implicit differentiation does with respect to non-functions is like, okay, we'll let you work. We're going to allow this to work. However, you are going to have to supply more information up front for this to be able to work. But, I mean, it's not that hard, right? It ends up being negative 2 over root 5, which last I checked <clears throat> was negative 2 root 5 fifths, just if I, if I rationalize the denominator. Now, that looks, I don't know, it looks about right. But it's about negative 4 fifths, maybe a little bit bigger. I mean, even in my crappy drawing, that's not too bad. It's pretty close to negative 1. Isn't that cool? Now, let me give you a cautionary tale. Let's take... Hmm. Let's take something that we've, that we've played with before. So let's say that I have y equals 2x squared minus 4xy and then plus 5y squared. And let's say this equals 2 cares, 20. Now, we're, I don't know what, how many of you remember this, but what this is is basically I'm taking an ellipse and I'm twisting it on an oblique axis. So I'm just, you know, our standard issue ellipses look like this but I take this guy and I'm going to rotate it. Remember that? That was pretty fun when we did that in class last year. For those of you that haven't done that, it's kind of a cool experiment. All right, but we're not going to worry about it. I still know, you don't really have to know that this thing is, a, is an ellipse to make it hum. I do know that it's a not function. In other words, I can't solve for y in this. It's impossible. I can't get y by all by itself and have it be a function of x. We're not afraid of that. We just do our thing. Watch. We say, all right, we admit it. Our bad. This is the x. All right, so let's see. Derivative of 2x squared, last I checked, was 4x. Now, this term right here will give students fits beyond fits. All right, now that's a product. Now, the way in which I play with this, I keep my life as simple as I possibly can. I think of this as 4x times y. All right, now that becomes important. I'm going to go minus. I'm going to respect my negative by pulling it out and keeping it out of my way. The derivative of 4x is 4. Now, the y, remember, it's a product, so it's the derivative of the first times the second as it stands. I have not taken the derivative of y, so I don't have to leave a footnote. However, remember, product rule says the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second. Well, the second thing I'm taking a derivative of is the y times the first as it stands, right? Derivative of y is 1 dy over dx. That's that footnote. So it's really 4x times 1 dy over dx. That's the derivative of this guy, this whole thing right here. All right? And then plus the derivative of 5y squared. Well, this says to take the derivative with respect to x's, but I'm going to treat it as though it's an x, and I'm going to leave a footnote. I'm going to leave a note behind that says, okay, 10y, however, dy over dx, and then equals 0. Now, remember, the point of all this is to be able to solve for a derivative that we're able to use. So I need to do a little bit of algebra here. Okay, so da -da, I got 4x minus 4y minus 4x dy over dx plus 10y. 
dy over dx equals zero. All right. Now, wait, this is just simple algebra, right? I just have to isolate dy over dx. So I'm going to combine terms and do all that good stuff. So I'm going to send these two guys over across the equal sign, and I'm going to end up with negative 4x dy over dx. And then I might as well keep the positive term. No, no, I won't do that yet. I'm going to get 10y dy over dx. And this is going to equal 4y minus 4x, right? Now, I know that a lot of you like to, let's just, everything's divisible by 2, so let's keep things simple. I'm going to do a little puff of algebra here, and let's see if you can catch it. It ends up being 5y dy over dx minus 2x dy over dx is equal to 2y minus 2x. Now I'm done with the simplifying. Now, I'm trying to solve for dy over dx. These two terms both have a dy over dx, so let's factor it out. They're common to both. And I end up with 5 my, minus 2x equals 2y minus 2x. And then dy over dx is equal to 2y minus 2x divided by 5y minus 2x. Easy peasy. Look at that. I got a derivative. It's not a function. So to be able to make this guy hum, I need a point that lives on this equation. And I have to ensure that it lives. So I just, if I just sort of flipply go out and say, I don't know that that's a word, but if I want to take the derivative of this guy at the point 1 comma 1, well, by God, I better plug it in and make sure that 1 comma 1 is on this function. Otherwise, it's not going to work. I'm going to have invalid information. All right. So remember, we take derivatives at points on equations or on functions. So let's see, 2 minus 4, negative 2, plus 5 is 3. 3 doesn't equal 20. This point doesn't even live on this equation. So I can't plug it into here. I mean, if I the problem is, and this is sort of the, a, a flaw in the system, is if I do plug it in, I'll get an answer. It's just that that answer won't make sense in the context of the problem. Now, notice one other thing. If I can find equations of, or excuse me, slopes of tangent lines, then I can find equations of lines, right? I mean, basically all of the rules, all of the uses, all of the utility of the derivative that we used when we were dealing with functions still applies. Notice over here, I was dealing with the point 2 comma 5. I ended up with a slope because that's all that the derivative is. If I have a point and a slope, I'm an equation of a line. So again, I hammer on you guys about this in class, and I want to make sure that you that you get it. It, it. All of these things just keep building on one another. It's not like you learn a little and spit it out, and learn a little and spit it out. These things just, and that's pretty different if you think about it from Algebra 2 and even Trig, where you'd learn, you know, what do we do? We learn about triangles and trig, and then we went and did some vectors, and then we went and did some matrices. You know what I mean? It kind of jumps all over the place. Calculus is true to the goal all the way through. 